Suck, Chooms. How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, one of the most common questions I get on my channel is if vitamin D plays any role in hair loss whatsoever. Oftentimes, I'll hear many of my subscribers will ask me things like, But Kevin, I've been on finasteride for like two whole weeks and I still don't have my juvenile hairline back, bro. Could it be because my vitamin D levels are too low? Well... Before I go any further on that topic, I should remind you hair loss switchers that if you are losing your hair, the chances that it has anything at all to do with your vitamin D levels is extremely unlikely. I want to make that clear right now. However, that isn't to suggest that there isn't any nuance in this subject. It turns out that vitamin D actually does play a role in the hair growth cycle. But the problem is, is that a lot of people, they make the false assumption that their hair loss is only due to a lack of vitamin D. And as a consequence of that misconception, a lot of snake oil salesmen and hairline fraud cells will exploit this fear so they can push a bunch of bullshit hair vitamin supplements, which people will end up taking instead of finasteride since they'll falsely believe that their hair loss is due to factors other than DHT when it's not. Now, let me be emphatically clear here, Chooms. DHT, dihydrotestosterone, is what causes hair loss, not vitamin deficiencies. That's why you have fat, disgusting, slovenly, binge-drinking, World of Warcraft-addicted piles of filth like Steve Bannon who have full heads of hair, while you see people who are the absolute pinnacle of good health who are still completely bald. It's a sad fact of life, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's our genetic sensitivity to DHT that is what is causing our hair loss, and that is not something that can be controlled by things like lifestyle factors. However, that is not to suggest that there are never any exceptions, or that vitamin D doesn't have any role in hair growth at all. It's just that its role pales in comparison with the role of DHT in causing hair loss, but its role is still not completely non-existent, and that is what I want to talk about today, Chooms. So... While in theory, vitamin D levels when they're too low could cause hair loss, the actual number of documented cases of this happening is extremely low. This article describes one such case, that of a Dr. Sharon Keene from Tucson, Arizona, published recently in 2022. Dr. Keene notes that besides the case she described in this case report, there are only two other cases of vitamin D deficiency causing hair loss that she could find in the medical literature. Both of those cases were of women, and both of them had severe vitamin D deficiencies. One had a vitamin D level of just 12 nanograms per milliliter, and the other one had a level of 9 nanograms per milliliter. To give you an idea of just how low that is, the recommended level of vitamin D is between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter, and levels below 20 nanograms per milliliter are considered severely deficient. So, the two previous case reports were of women, and both of them responded well to vitamin D supplementation. But the subject of the case report in Dr. Keene's article is a man. He was a 41-year-old man with androgenic alopecia who was actually being evaluated for a hair transplant. As you can see from these pictures, he had typical male pattern hair loss, and he was a Norwood 6 or Norwood 5. However, he had been diagnosed recently with a severe vitamin D deficiency. His vitamin D level was only 12 nanograms per milliliter. Later. So, he had already started on vitamin D supplementation, but he had never been on finasteride or minoxidil, surprisingly. So, Dr. Keene recommended six months of finasteride and topical minoxidil to try to improve his hair growth prior to his hair transplant. But, when he was seen six months later, he had pretty remarkable hair regrowth, as you could see in these photos here. But, if I were talking to Dr. Keene right now, what I would probably tell her is, But Dr. Keene, that's just because this guy responded well to finasteride and minoxidil. It had no nothing to do with treating his vitamin D deficiency, right? Well, Dr. Keene had initially thought that too, but the guy had apparently succumbed to the rampant fear-mongering online about finasteride and minoxidil, and he actually had not taken these drugs, or so he claimed. Anyways, his vitamin D level had normalized to 50 nanograms per milliliter from the vitamin D supplementation that he was taken and prescribed to by his doctor, and Dr. Kane decided to hold off on doing a transplant because his hair regrowth was so good. So, after a year, his hair looked even better, such as what you can see here. So, if he really was not using finasteride or minoxidil, this appears to be all due to the patient correcting a severe vitamin D deficiency, which I have to be honest, I'm a little bit skeptical of. 
love. I think it's possible he was bullshitting us and he really was on finasteride binoxidil. I mean, who knows? But like I said, there aren't a whole lot of cases in the medical literature of severe vitamin D deficiency causing hair loss that can be reversed by correcting the deficiency with vitamin D supplements. There are apparently only three cases in the entirety of medical literature that we know of. However, there are still some theoretical reasons as to why very, very low levels of vitamin D could actually cause hair loss. First of all, Let's talk about what vitamin D actually is for a moment and what it does. As Dr. Keene in her article points out, calling vitamin D a vitamin is actually somewhat of a misnomer, and that's because vitamin D isn't really a vitamin. It's a steroid hormone that is actually produced by the body. There are two forms of vitamin D. We have vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 is not found in humans, but it is found naturally in certain mushrooms. Vitamin D3 is a more potent version of vitamin D2 and is found in certain fish like salmon, mackerel, and herring. But it is also produced naturally in human beings by exposure of the skin to ultraviolet light. However, even vitamin D3 still needs to be further metabolized by the liver and kidneys to become the activated form of vitamin D, which is called dihydroxyvitamin D3. So, the whole process is pretty complicated, and in the modern world, it is difficult to get sufficient vitamin D levels just from diet or sun exposure. In fact, trying to increase your vitamin D levels by just increasing your sun exposure has many, many downsides, like increasing the risk of skin aging and even the risk of getting skin cancer. So, it's not surprising that vitamin D deficiency is common. In the United States, more than 50% of Hispanic and African American adolescents in Boston had vitamin D levels below 20 nanograms per million milliliter, and even 32% of healthy students and physicians at a hospital in Boston had vitamin D levels below 20 nanograms per milliliter. It's even more common in places like the Middle East, where there's lots of sun, of course, but people like to stay indoors all the time because it's just too damn hot to go outside in the desert. However, we live in modern times, chums, so it shouldn't be a big problem to maintain normal vitamin D levels. All you have to do is take a daily vitamin D3 supplement. That's it. A lot of vitamin D3 supplements do contain gelatin capsules, which is a problem if you are a vegan, but fortunately, vegan versions of vitamin D3 supplements are still pretty easy to find. Also, be aware that vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, and that means that you can actually get too much of it because it can build up in the system, but that's probably unlikely unless you take super high doses of the vitamin or if you're taking a supplement along with eating a lot of foods that are high in vitamin D. So, we normally think that vitamin D is just important for absorbing calcium from the gut and improving bone health, but it actually plays a role in many physiological functions in the body, including hair growth. We know this because certain mutations of the vitamin D receptor receptor in humans can cause alopecia. It's been shown in mouse studies that mice, who are specially bred so that the gene for the vitamin D receptor is knocked out, have an impairment of the WNT wind pathway, which we know from many other clinical studies is crucial for the antigen growth phase of the hair cycle. There are also some small studies that compared vitamin D levels in people with hair loss versus the levels in people without hair loss. For example, in this study here, 45 women with female pattern hair loss were compared with 45 women without hair loss. The control women were selected to have similar age, body mass index, and amount of time spent in the sunlight to the women with hair loss. The study found that the average vitamin D levels was lower in the women with hair loss, 13.45 nanograms per milliliter in the hair loss versus 17.16 nanograms per milliliter in the control group. This was borderline statistically significant with a p-value of 0. 0.04, which is just below the cutoff for statistical significance, which is a p-value of 0.05. So, it's pretty interesting that even in the control group, they had low vitamin D levels since the normal level is over 20 nanograms per milliliter. That just goes to show how prevalent low vitamin D levels really are in the human population. There's also another similar study looking at vitamin D levels in men with androgenic alopecia. This one right here. The design of the study was the same as the one we just went over. It had 50 men with androgenic alopecia who were compared to 50 healthy control subjects who were matched to have similar characteristics to the alopecia subjects. Once again, vitamin D levels were found to be lower in the hair loss subjects. In this study, the investigators used different units for the vitamin D measurements. They used nanomoles per liter, and with that unit of measurement, anything less than 30 nanomoles per liter was considered deficient. So, the hair loss subjects had an average vitamin 
vitamin D level of 20.1 nanomoles per liter, while the normal subjects had a level of 29.34 nanomoles per liter. Once again, even the control subjects had on average an abnormally low level of vitamin D, which again goes to show just how common it is to have low vitamin D levels no matter what population we're observing. So what can we actually conclude from all this information? Well, for one thing, it does look like vitamin D deficiency is very, very common. So just having a low level of vitamin D doesn't correlate with hair loss necessarily. Even the control subjects in these two studies that we just went over also had low levels of vitamin D. The really important question though is whether having a low vitamin D level actually makes hair loss from androgenic alopecia worse. We know that androgenic alopecia isn't caused by low vitamin D levels. It's caused by genetics and elevated DHT levels in the hair form. But is it possible that vitamin D may just work as a general growth stimulant so that if you lack vitamin D, it is making your hair loss worse? Well, I think that maybe it's possible, though it definitely is not clear that just correcting low vitamin D levels will cause any hair growth. Like I mentioned, despite all the theoretical evidence we've gone over already, there are still only three cases of vitamin D-related hair loss in the medical literature. Just three. And I'd certainly expect that there would be a lot more if just taking a vitamin D supplement caused significant significant hair growth. Also, in those three cases, the vitamin D levels were extremely low. They weren't just typically low. We're talking about levels between just 9 and 12 nanograms per milliliter. That's about half of what is already considered extremely deficient, and it is a lot lower than what was found in the other studies that correlated hair loss and vitamin D levels that I quoted. So, I do think that extremely low levels of vitamin D may be the one situation where correcting a nutritional deficiency might cause some significant hair regrowth. But if the levels are just moderately low as it is with most people, I don't think that correcting that deficiency will cause any improvement in hair growth. If it did, we would have a lot more than just three case reports considering just how common vitamin D deficiencies are in the general population. But whether or not it's going to make a difference in hair growth, having low levels of vitamin D also causes other health problems, especially when it comes to bone health. So whatever impact vitamin D may or may not have on hair growth, it is probably a good idea to treat a vitamin D deficiency regardless. And since vitamin D deficiencies are so common, it's probably worth checking out your vitamin D levels or even just taking a vitamin D3 supplement daily just in case your vitamin D levels are low. I don't, however, recommend trying to treat a vitamin D deficiency by doing things like making dietary changes, and I certainly don't recommend trying to correct it by spending more time in the sunlight and putting your skin health at risk. I mean, we live in the age of enlightenment here at Shums, and there are freely available vitamin D3 supplements that are dirt cheap that are available to almost every person in the world, including vegan versions of the supplements. So just like with finasteride, you can easily just pop a vitamin D3 pill and get on with your life. And I don't want to hear anyone tell me about how they would prefer not to use a supplement because it's not natural. I mean, if you care about nature, then you shouldn't be on this channel because nature wants you to be bald. So just due to the lack of evidence alone, I don't think a vitamin D deficiency has any noticeable impact on your hair. If you are deficient though, then you should definitely consider adding a vitamin D3 capsule to your stack. But please, do not ignore the obvious problem of DHT. If you're going to be a big hair loss snowflake and assume that your hair loss must be from something special or unique and you try to treat it through some unproven theoretical angle, then guess what? You're just going to end up being bald and feeling stupid for not addressing the elephant in the room. There are, of course, other things that can cause hair loss other than DHT, but the chances that your hair loss is being caused by anything other than DHT is extremely, extremely unlikely and anyone who tells you otherwise is only telling you that because they want to sell you some bullshit hair loss program or supplement. Don't be fooled. Treat your hair loss problem with the most obvious solution, a 5-air inhibitor, and if necessary, also a growth stimulant like topical minoxidil. That's all you need to do. All right. I'll be back with more hair loss witchery soon, so thank you all for watching, Chooms. God bless.